Hey, it's me, GV, and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to episode 3 of Let's 100% Fall at New Vegas. Gotta get that 100% in there. Uh, in the last episode, we took care of Good Springs powder ganger problem. And one thing I forgot to do is make sure that Trudy is still alive. So let's actually wait 12 hours, so it's gonna be about noon. Uh, there is a wait feature in this game, as with most uh, Fallout and Elder Scrolls games, where basically uh, I'm tapping back on my Xbox One controller and uh, then just waiting uh, a certain amount of time, which I love, by the way. What was the game I was playing recently where you couldn't wait? Uh, I don't know, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild on Twitch, maybe, or... Uh, there was just some game where I, I loved it, but you just couldn't wait. And it's just like, just let me wait, man. Alright, so we're looking for Sunny Smiles. I want to make sure that she's alive. I didn't see her body. There she is. Okay. So that's Trudy alive, that's Sunny alive, Ringo's alive. Everybody should be alive while the Powder Gangers are dead and gone. Well, not so much gone. Okay, I guess we can't just simply cut off a head. All right, fine. Uh, okay, so anyways, I think we're pretty much good to leave and be on our way. Is there anything else that we can do here? We fixed the radio. We did the powder gangers thing. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, there might be some little stuff here and there, but mainly I think we're kind of just done with Good Spring. So I think it might be time to mosey on over to the next town. So let's take a look at our quests, shall we? So, uh, DLC, 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 not DLC. They went that away. Inquire about your delivery assignment with the administrator of the Mojave Express in Prim. Find the men who tried to kill you. Not for revenge, maybe for revenge, but mainly just, be mainly just because they have the delivery that we need to deliver. And we will be hunted down by mercenaries if we don't deliver. So, Prim is over this way. Uh, we have to go from Good Springs over to Good Springs Source over to Prim. So, I think we're just going to go ahead and do that. We're going to travel to Good Springs Source so we can get a little bit of a... Uh, little bit of, uh, of a head start here. And then, what other weapons were we using here? Oh, we got our Caravan Shotgun. This thing is OP. Man, they really do start you with some OP weapons if you have the DLC packs. Uh, I wish there were an option, I don't know, to turn that off or something. It's just like, if you have it, you, you, you know, you, you can choose to just toss it all away, I guess. But that doesn't make much sense for the character. Uh, but you don't have to use it, but then you sell it, and then you have a lot of caps extra. I don't know. It's just kind of, just kind of silly how much they give you. Because like I said, when this game first came out, you had to pre-order, um... Well, you know, you had to pre-order the game from, like, GameStop or Amazon or Best Buy or whatever, and each one would give you a different pack. I think the Tribal pack was Amazon, you know, because it makes sense, Amazon, Tribal, right? And, uh, let's see, the, I don't know what the other, I think the Classic pack was from GameStop, because I think that's the one I actually got. I think I pre-ordered this game way back in, what, 2011 from GameStop, and I got the Classic pack, which, uh, gives you a canteen and the weather 10 millimeter pistol. Uh, so yeah, you just get a lot of stuff, and especially when, it, you know, you're only supposed to have one when the game first came out, but now it just gives you all of them, basically, so that's kind of lame. And in the top left, you can see you take a sip from your trusty Vault 13 Canteen, uh, and I don't know if that does anything. I always forget. Does that actually do anything? Does it heal you? It might only matter for uh, Hardcore Mode, where basically uh, you'll always be a little bit more hydrated than, um, you know, not having... Uh, not being able to drink from the canteen, basically. But anyways, so here we go. Uh, right up ahead is going to be Prim. Um, you can tell by the gigantic roller coaster and the big buffalo up there. Fast travel. You have discovered several locations. You can fast travel back to your discovered locations using the world map in your Pip-Boy. There's our hey, level where up. where the hell do you think you're going? Prim is off limits. What's going on in Prim? Some convicts from the prison up the road have taken over the town. Everyone inside is either dead or in hiding. What's more, there are two tribes of raiders causing trouble in this area as well. You'd be safer heading back up to Good Springs. Shouldn't you be protecting the town or something? We'd love to, but they don't fall under NCR jurisdiction. Even if they did, we're in no shape to protect them. Why can't you protect them? We don't have the equipment to take out the convicts. And even if we did, we need some extra hands for backup. You should talk to Lieutenant Hayes. He's in a tent down the road. Just stay on the west side of the overpass if you don't want to get shot. Okay, so we are level three. Again, I think just speech all the way to 100. It'll go by super fast. Okay, so 
Let's see. By the way, I know we're kind of a... I'm giving him a... I'm giving Avery here a kind of rough and tumble type of voice, and it doesn't make much sense for a 10 char charisma, this, you know, charismatic cowboy type, but I guess, I guess the charisma really stems from him just... I don't know, having a, a no-all aura about him, if that makes sense. I guess that's kind of what I'm going towards, if you catch my drift. Okay, so unfortunately, we need to get to Prim, because that's where our lead is. Uh, yeah, that's anything with red, by the way, is stealing. I know a lot of what I'm talking about people already know, but, you know, just for the people that uh, have never played a Fallout game before, or there's definitely going to be some of them, so, you know, I don't want to leave them out. Uh, now, they said, he said, go talk to... The person in the camp. I thought they were... Actually, did we get a new quest for that? No. So, why did he say go talk? I mean, should we talk to this person first? Let's go talk to him first. I don't know if you have to or if there's even any reason to, but we'll give it a shot. Why not? Uh, so, we have a little NCR encampment here. Uh, we have just an NCR tent Hi. there and Lieutenant Hayes' tent. This was the lieutenant he was referring to. I'm Lieutenant Hayes of the New California Republic Army, 5th Battalion, 1st Company. What's your business? Thanks for telling me that, I guess. What are you doing out here? We were sent out here to hold back the tide of convicts from the correctional facility. As you can probably tell, we aren't doing the kind of job we could be doing. What's the problem with your mission? The mission isn't a problem. The problem is with supplies. The convicts are better armed and organized than our intel initially suggested. I'm trying to get some reinforcements here, maybe some guns with some firepower, but shit. Things are just going slow. Tell me about the correctional facility. Most people just call it NCRCF. That's NCR Correctional Facility. A little bit ago, the convicts there staged a coup. Killed the guards that weren't able to escape. And have been ransacking the area since then. Do you have any information on the convicts? Not much. They've taken to calling themselves powder gangers, mostly because they've taken to using the explosives meant to clear boulders as weapons. They got organized faster than I would have thought, most of them at least. Thankfully, the small group in town here seemed to have split off from the main force, so they aren't getting anything in the way of support. So pretty interesting, the powder gangers that we dealt with in Good Spring are, Good Springs are an offshoot of these powder gangers that took over the correctional facility. I have some other questions. I have some free time, ask away. I guess I don't have some other questions. Goodbye. Sir. Sir. Yeah, I like Lieutenant Hayes. He refers to me as sir. Quite nice. Even though we're not a we're not a sir, really. We're just kind of a random drifter. But anyways, uh, so we need to get to Prim. And they said it was off limits, but it's actually not off limits, I don't think. Uh, you can literally just go over there. But let's talk to this guy. I'm not sure you should be here. Oh, that's weird, because I'm actually sure that I should be here. So this is the NCR, by the way. Uh, there's their flag, the New California Republic. They existed back in Fallout 1 and 2. As I said, a lot of the stuff in Fallout 1 and 2 are so close to what's in this game, which is just crazy to see, uh, you know, given that this game takes... This game came out, what, uh, I don't know, 12 years after? Uh, no, more than that, right? Uh, yeah, 1990, I think, 9 to 2009... And then, uh, yeah, a couple more. Yeah, so this game takes place a long time after, or came out a long time after, but, you know, still has a lot of the same stuff, like the NCR. So, there are landmines all over here, and we're going to disable them, and we're going to take them. Uh, free landmines, but also we get experience for each one that we disable. Easy peasy. And I think there might be more up ahead as well, so we'll keep an eye out for that. But what we're really concerned with... I guess we'll use this shotgun for now. What other weapons do we have, by the way, since we're already out of energy weapon stuff? Oh, the Magnum Revolver, right. Okay, let's hotkey that one. Um, we'll put that as our secondary weapon over here. Actually, we'll put that over here. Yeah, okay. Broad Machete down there to the bottom left. Dynamite to the top left. Frag Mine to the top right. Laser Pistol, we're going to keep... Uh, unslotted for now just because we don't have any ammo for it mercenaries grenade rifle uh down there to the bottom left right or down there to the bottom right i guess sturdy caravan shotgun over here okay and then apparel we're going to use the desperado cowboy hat gives us one perception pretty op honestly just for a silly hat uh and i think that's all we want so this is what we look like now pretty cool 
And uh, let's go ahead and take this on. Uh, so we're not really going to be using stealth in this playthrough, which means this playthrough is going to go much faster than my playthroughs normally go because I pretty much always use stealth. But that means we got to be safe as well because obviously if you ain't using stealth, you don't have the element of surprise and you might get slaughtered. And I happen to know right around this corner, hey. we got some escaped convicts. So let's go ahead and use the shotgun. Got him. Our gun skill is not too great. So we can literally walk right up and explode this poor guy's head off of his body. Adios, pal. Okay, that takes care of the people out here. Let's go ahead and loot them. Uh, NCR, so there's different currencies in this game as well. NCR dollars in addition to the bottle caps and like coins and things. So we want to make sure to take those. Uh, the five, yeah, 556 rounds and that's about it. I guess I need to identify what is the good stuff. Wow, one stick of dynamite is valued at 50? Really? And it only weighs like half of a pound? Okay, we're going to take them then. Powder gangers have lots and lots and lots of dynamite. So here we have like two $20 NCR bills. So we're going to make sure to take that, all the weapons that we can, and the ammo. And then there we are. Now, before we enter the casino, we got some things to explore here. First and foremost, here's the Mojave Wasteland Express, or whatever it's called. Uh, or the Nash residence? Wait. Well, yeah, we're looking for Nash because he was the owner of the, uh, who we work for, basically. This is who we work for, the uh, delivery uh, thing we have Daniel Wyant here who has Mojave Express delivery order four out of six so basically if you're not getting what's going on here there were six different couriers um that had to deliver one interesting thing each ours was the platinum chip uh but each but there's uh five other couriers that you know had to deliver something as well so this is this guy's so let's see that is the same part of our mess uh mission up there so far, this is the exact same, except here. This package contains two oversized dice composed of fuzzy material. And then we got the same contract penalties down there. So we had to deliver a poker chip. This guy had to deliver fuzzy dice. Huh. Might be wondering what the heck's going on there. Well, we'll figure out later on. And actually, let's go into the Nash residence before we enter the casino. Because within the Nash residence, we're going to have a thing on this table here, a damaged robot. This is an advanced model robot with a reinforced frame. It is well weathered and appears to have seen a good bit of action. There's very little in the way of serious damage. So let's examine the electronics. A few of the primary electronic systems seem to be fully functional and the redundant systems are all working. If you bypass some of the primary systems, the secondary systems should compensate and make some of their repairs easier. Science 55 or higher required. And we do not have that. So let's try to fix it with repair. Some servos and gyroscopes need to be recalibrated and replaced, but it looks as though the robot can be repaired. Repair 65 or higher required. And what about repair with parts? Looks as though the damaged servos and gyroscopes could be replaced with the correct components. Requires three pieces of scrap metal, two sensor modules, and some scrap electronics. Interesting. So, we don't have any of that. What we do have is scrap metal. And also, there's a scrap metal. It's steel? Really? Well, we ain't in the business of stealing, so that's not going to happen. Thought there was something on the table there. Okay, uh, so yeah. There, this is why I love Fallout New Vegas. Um, it gives you three choices basically also can i get let's see how are we gonna do thumbnails for this series i guess what we could do and what i probably should have been doing for enderall as well but i didn't even think to do it i don't know why is like we can stand here and like hit the console and then type in or not hit the con uh console please oh boy is it like not oh no seriously <laughs> So I would have to go to like HUD opacity and reduce it all the way and do the same thing if I'm using a controller. And that way we can get a nice little thumbnail like that. Oh man, that's gonna be annoying. If uh, if I was playing with keyboard and mouse, I'd be able to just hit the console and then uh, type in TM, which toggles the menus. Uh, and then, um, yeah, we'd just be able to do that in two seconds. So I'm not sure what we'll do because uh, like the other games I've been playing, this is gonna be a hard game to get the uh, thumbnails for. But let's enter the Vicky and Vance Casino, shall we? I don't know what it was brought you to Prim, youngster, but you might want to rethink your plans. Town's gone to hell. This guy has always sounded like Tommy Lee Jones to me. Who are you? Johnson Nash is my name. Husband to Ruby Nash. 
Lived in Prim going on eight years now, thick and thin. I'm a trader primarily, for what it's worth with things like they are. I also run the local Mojave Express outpost. I'm a courier with Mojave Express. Well, I don't got any work right now, sorry to say. I lost a package I was supposed to deliver. I'll tell you whatever I can. If you have a delivery order, you can show me. What can you tell me about this job? Oh, so you're talking about one of them packages. That job had Strange written all over it, but we couldn't turn down the caps. What was strange about it? That cowboy robot had us hire six couriers. Each was carrying something a little different. A pair of dice, chess piece, that kind of stuff. Last word I have in the office, it looked like payment had been received for the other five jobs. Guess it was just your chip that didn't make it. First deadbeat we hired to do the job, canceled. Hope a storm from the divide skins him alive. Well, that's where you came in. He canceled? Yeah, got this look when he saw you next down on the courier list. His expression turned right around, asked me if your name was for real. I said, sure as lack of rain, you were still kicking. Then he turned down the job, just like that. I asked if he was sure it was good money. No, let Courier 6 carry the package, that's what he said. Like the Mojave'd sort you out or something. Then he just up and walked out. So that's really important, but that's not going to be really important for quite a long time. Do you know who he was, where he went? No idea. Sounds like you two had a history for him to act like that. And turn down the money, too. Hope he didn't see any trouble in that package of yours. Maybe he thought your name was bad luck. Enough for me to say. Some men stole my package. A man in a checkered suit and some thugs. Did they pass this way? Well, now that you mentioned it, a few nights back, one of the townies was out scavenging for supplies. He said he saw a fellow with a daisy suit come through with some of them great con misfits. They was talking about a chip. One of those men shot me. I need to know the best way to get to him. Well, for that, your best bet is going to be talking to Deputy Beagle. Since they came to town, he was keeping a good bit of notes on him, and he was slinking around Bison Steve when your pretty boy friend came through. He may have heard where they were going. I'd like to ask you something else. I guess I don't have anywhere better to be. What can I do to help Prim? Right now, Beagle is the closest Prim's got to any organized law, but he's still stuck up in Bison Steve. First thing I'd say is get his sorry butt out of there. I need to get going. Bye. Oh yeah, that's right, he just ends with like a quick bye, and it sounds like a different voice actor too, so weird. Okay, so there's John- Oh my god, it's thundering outside and scared the crap out of me. I don't know, the mic might even have picked that up. That was really scary. So that's Johnson Nash, and his wife's over here, Ruby oh, Nash. Yeah. Uh, does she talk to us? Hello there. What brings you to Prim? Who are you? I'm Ruby Nash. Pleased to make your acquaintance. My husband and I are Prim long-timers. He fancies himself a traitor, and I know my way around a kitchen. What do you cook? My specialty is a rad scorpion venom casserole. It's more appetizing than it sounds. The venom has a sharp, smoky flavor, and it numbs your mouth so fierce you'll forget you ever had a tongue. It's perfectly safe, long as you don't have sores in your mouth for the venom to find your blood. Cause that'll kill you dead. Yeah, maybe don't eat any venom casserole. I'd like some of that rad scorpion venom casserole, though. I guess I changed my mind. Does sound good, don't it? How many rad scorpion glands you got? I don't got any. Guess you'll be needing to find some, huh? Come back when you do. I thought we had at least one. Goodbye. Goodbye. Jeez. <laughs> okay, don't be so brokenhearted about it. All right, so here's the Vicky and Vance Casino. Uh, there is something interesting about the Vicky and Vance Casino. A couple things, actually. 
Uh, I don't think we can really interact with them just yet. There's a safe there, but it's illegal to steal. And sorry, uh, like with most of my characters, our character just ain't inclined to be stealing things from good-hearted folk. Hey there. Uh, hi. Okay, so there is, let's see, there's like a whole bunch of saves back there, um, which, can we get in through the door? We can, huh. Okay, well, we might do some of this more legal stuff later on. Uh, here we've got Vance's outfits. These mannequins display replicas of some of the clothing that was found in the trunk of Vicky and Vance's death car. Vance didn't share Vicky's sense of fashion and chose to dress himself how he envisioned a gangster would dress. And we got the car as well. The 9mm submachine gun preserved in this glass case to the left of this plaque is the actual we weapon Vance carried in a paper-wrapped box under some suitcases in the trunk of his car during his and Vicky's crime spree. Obviously a play on Bonnie and Clyde. Never fired and luckily untouched by the hail of bullets that ended its notorious owner's life. The weapon's mint condition is in inspires dread in all who look upon it. Experts speculate that Vance might have killed as many as 50 people had he ever fired the gun. So long as his aim was exact, he was starting off with a full clip or even more if he had additional ammo clips and remembered to reload. And uh, here we have the plaque, which I guess is the same thing. So notice that the submachine gun is missing. It is not here. And there's the, there's the car that was shot up. And also there's a robot. Pram Slam. But that's a lot of stuff to interact with and try to do right now. We're going to go ahead and go over to the Bison Stave Hotel. Uh, let's take a look at our quests here. So we're going to do My Kind of Town. We could go do the main quest here, but let's do My Kind of Town. This is 100% after all. Prim's deputy has been captured by powder gangers and Bison Steve and needs to be rescued. Bison Steve is this big old hotel right up ahead. So we're going to go in guns blazing. It's so weird for me not to do this with stealth, but that's just kind of how it is. Hey. Hello, fellers! Whoa, that was a wide shot. Hi there! Ooh, we are really inaccurate. Okay, what's this over here? Your left arm? Well, it was! Bye-bye! Now, there's one room we got to be real careful about. And don't worry, because we are going to be. Okay, we got a safe there that's got a freaking hard lock on it, meaning we need like 75. We need like 75 uh, lockpick to be able to open it. By the way, you want to take all the pre-war money, too. I, uh, I always get things confused with Fallout 3 and Fallout New Vegas. But, um, yeah, there's like pre-war books. They... I don't think you need the pre-war books in this game, but see, that's what I get confused with. Like, the pre-war money and the pre-war books and certain things are really useful in Fallout 3. Some of them are not useful at all in Fallout New Vegas, and I just forget which one's which. So, there's going to be a room that we're going to have to be super careful about, like I said, and it's coming up here in a second. So let's go ahead and save the game just to be careful. This game is not too hard, as you're probably realizing. Uh, can we open this? We're going to need to get that lockpick to 25 as soon as possible. A lot of the things to 25, just because that's kind of your first big hard cap. Man, I don't really want to charge this. Uh, where's our dynamite at? Okay, let's use some dynamite here. See how much damage that does. Oh boy, this guy's rushing me. Okay, that's not working out. Go ahead and use our vats on his head. Shotgun blast to the head should kill in one hit, but unfortunately this is a video game, so that's just not, it's just not that easy. It's gonna take two, I suppose. Nice throw with that dynamite. Okay, let's try to drag him around the corner since we're gonna be able to use our vats on him. Come on, fellas. Tried to say fellers and fellas, and it came out as like fellers. Okay, let me go for your. Why is it not giving me a? Sometimes Vats glitches out and doesn't really give you a correct. There we go, 69. Just how I like it. Ha <laughs> ha! I'm so funny. Oh, is your left leg gone? Oh, is your whole life essence gone? That sure does suck. Now it doesn't. Okay, so I don't think we still dealt with the really big bad guy. There's sort of a boss that's right next to this room. And this is going to be what's hard. Uh, I think we'll go ahead and take out the mercenary grenade rifle for this one. 
Now, where is he at? We definitely didn't kill him. Where is he at? I guess we did kill him, but he switched it to a different weapon? I don't know what just happened there. Uh, let's use the first aid box. Grab... Wow, nothing here. Okay, we'll take the drugs to sell at least. And here's good old Deputy Beagle. I don't suppose you came here to rescue me. I'd cross my fingers, but my hands are numb. Nice hairstyle, partner. You must be Deputy Beagle. Why, yes I am. It's a pleasure to meet you. I'm in a bit of a predicament here. I'd be most appreciative if you'd set me free. I hear you may have information on some cons that came through here with a guy in a checkered suit. Indeed I do, good sir. And I would be thrilled to share that information with you as soon as I am released from captivity. You can tell me or you can rot in here. Well, you look to be a trustworthy sort. Okay, I'll tell you what I know. I overheard them saying that they're on their way to Novak. If you want to follow them, I strongly suggest that you follow the road through Nipton. There are a lot of dangerous things out in the desert. You won't have me with you to protect you, as I need to stay here and keep Prim safe. It would be so very delightful if you set me free. How'd you end up being a hostage anyway? I must say it's been the low point of my career in law enforcement. The powder gangers stole into town at night and murdered my sister and her husband, the sheriff, in bed while I was sleeping in the office. I watched them for a bit, waiting for the right moment to pounce and arrest a lot of them, taking careful notes as I watched. To my dismay, they found me while I waited in the shadows and brought me here. This guy sounds a lot like... This guy always reminds me of uh, Eugene from The Walking Dead, and that's really messed up. I don't know the last time I heard that line. He, they killed your sister? Jesus. I'll set you free now. Oh, that's just marvelous. I think I'll be making my way outside now. The air is a little close in here. If you try to run away instead of fighting at my side, I'll kill you myself. Oh, why, uh, of course. I'd never let you fight my kidnappers with my help, but without it. You lead the way. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, we're gonna use the bed. Never mind, there's enemy. Oh, is this the guy? You like that? Whoa! Well, that's not good. See you in a second. Okay, let's try that again. Now, where did these guys even come from? Okay, so yeah, Beagle's a big coward if you weren't understanding. Whoa, I think they just spawned these guys. That's not cool. Also, what is going on with my accuracy, man? Say goodbye to your right arm. Okay, I guess he's just gonna accept getting shot to death up the butt. Fine with me. All right, deputy, come on, let's go. We got places to loot. Now, there is something here. Something's very odd. There is a uh, big boy. Maybe I'm just not to the level that I'm usually at? I'm very surprised to not see the guy that I'm expecting to see. Hmm. So, we're gonna go ahead and see if we can't find that guy. Uh, yeah, man, we really need 25... Yeah, you want to get those lockpick and science uh, skills up there because... Also, some purified water there, by the way. Uh, yeah, that's going to help you get into all of the... Um... Yeah, what am I thinking of? I'm using this bed to... Oh, Enderol. Yeah, that's... Okay, that's what I was thinking of where you couldn't just wait and it was annoying. I mean, same thing with Breath of the Wild, too. Although you could wait. You just needed to find a fire, but... Enderol, you need to find a bed. Yeah, I, I, I am a very firm believer that you should just let people be able to wait in games like these. Just makes it so much more fun. Yeah, maybe it's not realistic, but come on. Okay, so there is normally a guy here with a flamer that shoots these gigantic flaming balls of fire at you. And I don't know why he's not in that room. He's like always in that room. Also, I think I want to fully explore the Bison Steve Hotel, by the way, because I think there is something that we want to find. Uh, do, does one of these guys have a flamer? Not those fellers. There we go. Okay. Incinerator. That's what I was talking Yeah, the flamer is just a flamethrower. The incinerator fires these, like, flaming balls. Uh, this is... It weighs 12, but it's valued at 400. So we're going to take it. We're going to take the flamer fuel. And we're going to take the leather armor. You want to start taking things that 
are the same type as your main, um, and, you know, anything that you're using. If you find somebody with leather armor and you're using leather armor, you want to take it because you'll be able to repair your own stuff with it, even if you don't use it. Uh, so let's see. Let's loot all these fellas. Looking out for the key stuff. The money, the ammo, and looks like that's about it. Okay, we don't have too much time left here. Um, yeah, I think we're going to go ahead and explore the rest of the Bison Steve Hotel. I remember there being an interesting... Also, can we use this elevator? The elevator is broken, but it looks like as though it could be repaired. Repair 35 or higher required. I guess we had it. Okay, neat. Uh, we're going to go up, actually, the normal way, though, because I want to get that good, good, good experience. I normally do not, by the way, explore the Bison Steve Hotel. So this is going to be a new thing that I generally do not do. Uh, but yeah, this will go into the first floor, and this is a perfect place to end. We're going to use Deputy Beagle here and hope that he lives... Uh, that is our main concern. I don't want anybody to die in this playthrough, ideally, considering it is 100%. So we're going to end here. Thank you so much for watching, ladies and gentlemen. Hope you're enjoying this playthrough thus far. It has been an absolute blast right off the bat. I mean, it normally is for any series I'm doing, but I'm very excited for this game. Uh, we're going to do a lot of stuff that we don't normally do in my playthroughs and get to a lot of things that you've probably never seen before. So thanks so much for watching, and thanks to the people that support me on Patreon and everywhere else. And I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye.